Dear participants, good morning all. We are taking another few minutes to start the session because most of the participants are joined now. So it will, the session will start in another few minutes. Kindly bear with us.
ma'am good morning shanmuga vadivu ma'am good morning could you able to hear me ma'am good morning good morning to everyone good morning ma'am yes uh, you are on okay board. shall we start the session ma'am yes please very good morning to all one and all who have joined us for the second day of faculty development program on essential dimensions of high quality research myself dr d kartika associate professor from the school of computer science vit institute of arts and science coeducation college erode ira realizing your vision is a tough work motivating others to share your dream is even harder a good leader not only inspires her team she also inspires the world today we have with us one such person who constantly inspires everyone around her i am profusely overjoyed to take this opportunity to introduce our chief guest for the session dr m shanmuga vadivu is currently the professor and head dean of computer science and application at the gandhigram rural institute deemed to be the university and is involved in teaching research and extension she holds an additional responsibility of director iqaz and dean so school of computer science and technologies she has 31 years of academic experience and 21 years of research experience her research areas include medical image analysis healthcare analytics parallel computing software engineering and content based image retrieval under her guidance nine phd's were awarded presently eight phd scholars are pursuing their degree moreover she has guided 21 mphil scholars she has published 50 plus research articles in international journals 90 plus in international national conferences and 17 book chapters she has authored two research books and two edited volumes her science citation index is 37 her google scholar citation index is 552 with h index and i10 index as 12 and 18 she serves in the boards of studies of other universities and colleges she serves as an editorial board member of two journals she is sanctioned with the funded major research of ugc dst icmr and p mmm nmtt for an outlay of rupees 2.39 crore she serves as the coordinator for a department's funding schemes such as ugc sap drsi rupees 10 lakhs and dst fist rupees 45 lakhs she has been on an international academic assignment to singapore malaysia usa and china she has organized a national conference week long digital india program and five workshops she has delivered 200 plus talks in national and international conferences seminars etc she has attended the mhrd leadership for academicians program leap 2019 hosted by iit bombay she attended the second leg of leap at nanyon technical university singapore on february uh, march 2019 and uh, moving around with her academic background dr pichai holds a bsc physics and uh, in masters degree in computer applications phd in uh, digital image restoration msc in applied psychology she has qualified ugc net and slet distinguished and notable awards and recognition she is the recipient of indo us 21st century knowledge initiative award 2015 on the title augmenting the curriculum of higher educational institutions with an online integrator cognitive based employability skill assessment system using signal and video analytics one among the four of four projects sanctioned from india with the funding outlay of uh, rupees 125 lakhs this without wasting any time i am handing over the session to dr shanmuga vadivu ma'am ma'am over to you ma'am you are really very much privileged to have you for the session ma'am over to you ma'am so pleasant good morning to everyone who have joined online to this faculty development program i welcome you all to my session and uh, i also thank the authorities of the ed institution and the organizer specifically dr kartika ma'am who reached out to me and then uh, made me a part of this uh, meaningful exercise so um, i think uh, the process has already started this fdp so my uh, 
a duty now is to highlight on how to make your academic writing better or if it is already better how to make it the best and if it is already the best right how to make it all the more uh, interesting and how to make it all the more meaningful so a research has become an inevitable component in the quality measure of any higher educational institution and um, uh, research is like adding uh, salt to the food right without salt it may be stale and uh, so this research has become a kind of essential component and that is a deciding authority of uh, fate of many of the institutions and with regard to NAC or ARR or ARIA uh, the list is very lengthy and especially um, the higher education institutions now they want to go beyond <coughs> I mean, um, national accreditation, and they want to compete and be successful in the international accreditation also. In such cases, if this is the destination, and probably uh, we have to be uh, uh, very conscious and we have to be very committed about doing um, quality research as well as uh, we should be conscious about how we are doing research and what we are doing as research. And many more. I think uh, the topic or theme of this faculty development program is highly contextual and uh, highly essential uh, in the context of new education policy also. Uh, so I congratulate the organizers for having thought of this wonderful theme and again I thank the organizers for having inducted into this entire exercise. And uh, with a small note let us move on to my presentation. I trust uh, this is visible to everyone. Yes. No, Hello. Screen is not visible. On the screen is not visible. Not visible. Okay. Screen is not visible. Yeah. Okay. Just give me a minute time. Screen is visible now, ma'am. Is it fine now? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. It used to be a uh, one second. Okay, I put it this way. So my session will anchor around uh, just highlighting the essential dimensions of high quality research. And uh, before I move into my topic, okay, um, I just want to give uh, an outline about the session. Uh, an overview of academic writing, the characteristics of academic writing, its features and components, the steps in academic writing, and uh, if time permits, probably we will have a kind of interaction in this question and answer slot. And uh, can any one of you just uh, give me the definition of PhD? Or uh, 
PhD stands for, what is the um, acronym PhD for? One second, something has gone through. Yes. Hello. Um, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, we could hear you. I think you have uh, enabled the chat, right? Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Chat is enabled, even the uh, participant. Chat is enabled, ma'am. Okay. Participant even can unmute themselves and answer the questions. Okay, well. Can, uh, can any one of you give me uh, the expansion for PhD or what is PhD for? Hello? Dr. Deepa Shankar has uh, posted a message. Okay, right. Thank you, Dr. Deepak Shankar, for your answer as a doctor of philosophy. Is there anything else which you can call as um, expansion for PhD? Anybody else? Quickly, please. I have a definition for this. Or this PhD can be expanded as PhD stands for, please have a degree. See, the quality of PhD has stooped down to this level and we did not add the real value to PhD. And uh, it is just taken as any other degree. That is the plight of uh, our Indian educational systems. So um, it is very, very important for us to revisit the process, um, uh, the procedure, the outcome of research so that we can say for sure that my research is a quality assured research. So the very purpose of conducting these kind of faculty development program, especially on the research components is to give a kind of essential insights into the true components of research as well as just to sensitize us or to get refreshed about or to get enlightened on doing a quality research. So with this note, let me just move on. So this is the words of Alvin Toffler, and who, is, who was the author of uh, Future Shock, a book which was written in uh, late 1970s. And in this book, uh, Future Shock, he makes a mention about whom to be called as uh, literate of 21st century. And um, as per his definition, it goes like this. The illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read or and write. Right? It is not about reading and writing, but those who can't learn and learn and relearn. So please keep this as a mantra where we must have the ability to learn new things, unlearn whatever is not uh, essential, or unlearn whatever is not um, relevant for this context. And if there is something new which you have to learn, you have to relearn, relearn again and again. So Alvin Toffler has put it so interestingly, and uh, this holds good even now, even in 2020s, right? This holds very good because any literate should have the essential ability of learning and learning as well as relearning. I think uh, some of you must have read this book, Who Moved My Cheese? Right? And here, the, uh, the author, Dr. Spencer Johnson, makes a mention about what is change and why change always a permanent one or a persistent one. Because change is inevitable, right? Um, we change, we ourselves get changed as time flies. And then our friends change, then others' attitude towards us change, the lifestyle has changed, the technology has changed, the teaching pattern has changed. We have moved into online, right? 
and anything is anything and everything that you just look around you is getting changed spontaneously and the change becomes a radical component it is phenomenal so like we cannot be just away from this change so when you know that when we are conscious that change is permanent how are we going to be reactive to this right are we going to be reactive or are we going to be proactive so when you react as it comes to you without any kind of planning you react but when you want to be proactive right we just prepare ourselves to face the change and to reap the best benefit out of the changes so if you do not change right you can become extinct it is not you me we everyone right this is the this is the extracts from this book if you don't change you can become extinct so change happens whether we like it or not whether we aspire or not whether we accept or not change happens so we have to anticipate change in every possible domain in every possible way around us so we have to monitor the change suppose if there is a kind of uh, i mean um, awakening about artificial intelligence this is a new paradigm of uh, problem solving this has got its own advantages see now when we don't be conscious about what is happening around artificial intelligence and if you are not very i mean um, prepared to reap the benefits of artificial intelligence then it is done so we have to monitor what is happening monitor the change and then adapt to change quickly like we should not take suppose if artificial intelligence is introduced being a computer science faculty i am taking this as an example so if artificial intelligence is at the boom right uh, probably um, from 19 i mean uh, 2018 it has started so now when i say that well i really appreciate uh, the changes that artificial intelligence has brought forth so probably after 10 years i will just wake up myself and then start working with artificial intelligence then we are done so adapt to change quickly then change based on the requirement and most importantly quote and quote we have to enjoy any change right we never thought we are going to get glue to our uh, desktops to reach our uh, students to reach our children but now that has become the order of the day so when you say that when we just grumble that oh come on i am only comfortable with writing in the blackboard right i cannot just manage with the system because i am not able to see the children right we are done so enjoy the change right what what change happens try to see how best i can make it interesting how best i can make it more meaningful and how best i can master by adapting the change so be ready to change quickly and enjoy it again and again because change occurs continuously right this is a seamless procedure it happens continuously so be ready to face the cha- change and then um, let me not talk about this now so now uh, let me just give a small introduction about uh, this academic writing so this uh, presents information on uh, or this transmits idea as efficiently as possible or as effectively as possible or as scientifically as possible it processes the systematic series of steps or actions designed to achieve a particular task and uh, the written product is the result of this process so there is a process there is going to be some input so that's why we call academic writing as a scientific process there is going to be an input there is going to be a process there is going to be an output so uh, you should be very um, sensitive right you should be very conversant and you should be very conscious about the input the process and then the output so um, in simple it is the way of communicating the results of academic research in a written form to make the world understand what is that we are doing interesting what is that we are doing something novel and what what is that we are doing something interesting to the society or beneficial to the society so it is the art of writing down what you know for the purpose of discussing it with the other knowledgeable people right see now uh, you have done something and that should be communicated to the people and in addition to communicating something something to the world most importantly we have to be very conscious about how our result is going to be validated so a validation takes place it goes through a procedure it goes through a process writing is one process after we communicate there is 
another process which validates the content, which validates the format, which validates whether uh, your work is relevant to the domain and objective vision, mission of the journal and many such things. So it is uh, the art of writing down what you know for the purpose of discussing it with other knowledgeable people. Then academic writing is an important skill to master for a wide variety of professional as well as personal reasons because it becomes an inevitable component. So what are the characteristics of a good academic writing? So the characteristics of good academic writing can be put this way. Uh, good academic writing search for focused and specific questions to be answered. See now, normally what we do is we do some experiment and then we just write down the results and from there on we start writing our academic uh, paper or research paper. But now uh, we have to write uh, on one side, right? What are the questions, specific questions that triggered me to do this research? And what are the questions to be answered by me so that it becomes a, a kind of a useful material or it will be a value addition to my domain of research? So good academic writing uh, searches for, uh, for focus and specific questions to be answered. Then these questions are developed by a writer or by a researcher. So effective academic writing demonstrates clear critical thinking and the ability to make the arguments stronger by supporting them with evidences. See now this underline. Now whatever that we imagine, whatever that we dream cannot be made as a paper <clears throat> instead. We have to uh, make the world to understand you have got evidences to confirm the merit of your work, to confirm that your work is superior than the contemporary works or the reported work, or your work has got an edge over the rest of the work. <clears throat> Academic writing must be uh, very clearly mentioned, and English is both low context and reader responsible language. So it is the writer's job to make the arguments as comprehensible as possible. See now, uh, when we are writing a kind of article to uh, media, maybe to get published in a newspaper or any other media, <clears throat> well, you can just take your choice and then make it as um, elaborate as possible or make it just as expansive as possible. But when you are writing a research article, there should be a kind of uh, classical difference between writing an article to a newspaper or writing an article to be communicated to a journal. So we have to be as comprehensive as possible at the same time, um, just by, ma by making it as comprehensive, we should not miss out any important question and each and everything must be answered. Okay, so um, academic writing must be coherent, which means there should be a logical connection between the sentences. See now, this is like um, writing a story, right? Even in DST, there is a competition, writing a story about your research, which is called as Afsar. So every year they call for the proposal and the top 10 good 100 um, academic uh, presentations are just winning the recognition. See now, when you are writing a research article, it is like telling a story, right? See, what is the importance of my research? Why have I taken this research? What triggered me to do this component in my research? What is the significance of that? How is it going to help the future researchers um, by means of my uh, findings or by means of uh, the ideas that I have put into it? So academic writing must be coherent, which means there should be a logical connection between this, uh, the sentences, or there should be a logical connection between the various sections that we organize and support. And then uh, this, uh, when we attempt to write a good research article, it just starts with nurturing the creativity. Because uh, even though your research, I mean, uh, the kind of writing that you do may be very novel, it may be very interesting, but unless it has the component that we call as uh, creativity, right? Then the whole thing is being done. So then we cannot uh, just, uh, I mean, communicate to, communicate to any journal because creativity plays a very important role as we talk about research. So creativity uh, should be the nurturing component of research. And hence, uh, I have taken this first. So explore the new area in depth. See, how do we explore the new area? I think uh, other research, I mean, uh, speakers must be focusing on this. Now you have to make a very extensive study on the domain of your research. It should be um, 
I mean, wider and broader, deeper. So just explore all possible um, data that is available, and then you can shortlist, and then you can screen uh, the necessary articles, and that should be, there should be at least 100 research articles that you read before you start deciding about what is my problem line for my PhD. So no, uh, think creatively on a regular basis, right? Just you, you spend some amount of time when you can devote some time for reading, understanding, like uh, digesting the ideas and then coming out with new ideas, taking inferences. So all these things require a good amount of time. So know when to work more deeply or to move on. If you sit with your research article probably at uh, 11 o'clock in the night and probably we may not be able to concentrate better and surely your productivity, productivity will be very less. And suppose if you are a night bird, it is well and good. Otherwise, and if you want to do a very kind of, uh, uh, very serious kind of reading and uh, with a good amount of uh, in concentration. So normally uh, we advise them just to wake up at 4.30, get refreshed, and then you can do the work between five and 6.30. It's an ideal time where your brain is very fresh. You have taken a sleep and you have refreshed all the neurons in your brain and each and every cell of yours has got rejuvenated, it has got recharged. So your brain will cooperate with your thought process. So meditate daily and it can be taken as meditating on the problem or doing general meditation so that your concentration improves. So practice observation as well as describing. See now uh, you have to have the practice of having very deep observation, very sharp observation from what is happening around us in the domain of research number one. And secondly, we have to have a good comprehending ability. We must be able to describe in the best possible way. So then practice imagining, right? We imagine some idea and then we try to engineer it by following certain set of steps. Okay. There are 10 main features of academic writing, which is well organized and planned. And um, what are they? Number one, it is the complexity, right? What is the complexity that you have to explain in your work, right? Whether you want to make this very simple or is the, is the problem that you want to present happens to be very complex, how are you going to explain it? Then formality, right? Because for each and every publication, we have the formality. Then precision, that is uh, the, the accuracy of the results is very, very important. And then we should be um, objective, right? There should be a kind of 100% commitment and uh, the, uh, the, the neutral mind should be there in you so that we, are, we don't get prejudiced or we are not biased about the previously worked out examples or previous, previously worked out, worked out methods. So then uh, explicitness and we should be very open and transparent when we explain the methodology and then accuracy of your results, right? Then hedging then responsibility, organization and planning, all these things are, are very important for us because these are the important features which will fuel the process of uh, getting things done. So then uh, there are several steps that we can uh, just think of, right? When we talk about steps in academic writing and uh, may I know how many of the faculty members are yet to do research, those who are yet to receive their degree? Hello. How many of you are non PhD uh, faculty members? You can either raise your hands or put a message in the chat box. Okay. Okay. Maybe 10%. Dr. Kartiga, ma'am. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Well, see now, well, this is a kind of uh, opening for you, right? This is an eye opener for you. And you can learn the nuances of doing high quality research and you can just implement it and see to that you get good quality publications. So there are several steps of process to produce a good academic writing. So brainstorming, analyzing the task, it involves a purposeful writing and get to find the target audience. So now you write something and then discuss with open audience. So they will be able to analyze what is the quality of the work that we have done. 
Then planning the argument, you need to develop a main claim to decide how to support this claim using evidences. See now, uh, when we decide to um, present our work, we should be very careful about what is the evidence that I'm going to give, right? We have to plan for the evidence. That plan, that, uh, that evidence should be relevant um, contextually, and it should be relevant during this time. And you cannot just take something which is, which is obsolete or which is stale now. So as we're selecting all those things, it should be like day to day or uh, it should be the latest one. Then uh, research necessary to create for the fact-based objectives, then um, yeah, objective evidence to support the main claim, right? That is the, the way you are doing your research. Then start writing and start writing the draft. This is the place where we start and we just feel that writing a research article is a bottleneck. You can do 10 different researches and then make it available. But if it comes to say, writing a research article, we will postpone it at least for one week because we just get hesitant about writing a research article. And if that is your fear, you have to beat the fear and we have to ensure you do that first before you start with the next work. So then revise, make the information clear, add details, then cite resources and improve the writing, okay? Then proofreading, uh, check for grammatical, spelling, punctuation errors to make it perfect. And the last one is plagiarism. And that also uh, plays a very important role. Communication of research findings, it can be on seminar, conferences, or journal, or it can become a thesis, or we can just go for books. So writing paper, focus on innovation, then focus on the structure of the paper, make it readable and interesting, then plan about publishing, where to publish, then the ethics, right? What are the ethics to be followed when you are writing a research article? And what is the integrity that you show? You, you cannot just, I, I cannot just copy a, a, a pre-published research work and claim that it is mine. It is not ethical, right? Then I cannot borrow my ideas from the contemporary researchers or from uh, peer researchers and then publish it ahead of them. That should not be there. Then quality counts more than, and quality counts more than quantity. So it is not that like we can uh, just go for uh, 10 or 20 pages uh, right up, but it is just sufficient if we can just go for. So. Just give me a minute time, I'll join. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry for the break. Okay, so now uh, we just stop with uh, uh, focus on innovation, uh, then uh, uh, paper structure. How are we going to write? I think uh, I was just with this quality counts more than a quantity. See now, let us not just uh, um, plan for writing a book when you want to present your research results. It can be even a four page, uh, I mean, a research article, which may get published in IEEE, right? And then when you decide, you just decide what is your target to which uh, a journal am I going to, uh, I mean, communicate my paper. Then you just see what are the standards that are being followed by that journal and try to see what are the expectations, how the paper, there will be a kind of a commonality with respect to all papers published in a high quality journal like IEEE transaction. So we have to focus on how these papers are being designed to get accepted and published in a particular journal. So we have to do it. 
So these are all very important. Focus on innovation paper structure, make it readable and interesting. Way to publish ethics and integrity and the quality counts then quantity. Okay, this is quite interesting cartoon that I always love to see. And uh, this is the scientist who is just going to get his paper published, that is paper acceptance. So most scientists regarded the new streamlined peer review process as quite an improvement, right? So now we have to get beaten. Uh, there may be four reviewers who will like tear our paper uh, on the quality or uh, they may just say that it is, it's good for nothing or the, the results are irrelevant or they say that there is no relevance between what you have written and what you have reported. So all these things, we should be prepared to face it. But still, and despite all these turmoil, despite all this kind of bottlenecks, and if you are able to just come out with a good quality publication, that would be like realizing our dream. So we have to be prepared to face all those things because these kind of sufferings are highly, highly inevitable. Okay. So components of academic writing. Now there are six components in academic writing. Every piece of academic writing will include them in varying proportions. Number one, research aims. Uh, what is the aim of research? This is very, very important. On some occasions, you know, when you are writing your thesis work, I think most of us must have experienced. Now, we would have just started like very blankly, like it is like a trial and error method. We just do research. When we get the, the results, uh, which are very promising, then we just get stuck in that domain. And then after we finish the entire work, when you sit for writing the thesis, then we wonder, what are my objectives? What are the objectives that I'm supposed to give in my thesis, right? Because we are stuck as we were not conscious, we didn't focus ideally on the topic before we start working on the topic. So then um, research aim, it tends to investigate or discover. Then literature review, a summary of key points from other published research in the field, right? Literature review, survey, analysis of uh, the available literature. All these things will make us understand what is available and what is not available. So this is what you call as research gap, identification of research gap. So you have to just look out for fixing or spotting or locating research gap. What says this is done, this is yet to be done, right? When you find that, the, those two components, it is called as research gap. That is going to help us to formulate the problem line. Then hypothesis, a theory that you want to test in the research. You know, suppose if it is uh, artificial intelligence based breast cancer uh, analysis. So what is the hypothesis? Now, if these kind of tumors are present, then the person should be down with a particular type of uh, cancer. And if these things are not present, then this will be the result. So we just form a theoretical background for doing the entire research. And then methodology, the theoretical or practical message used to carry over the research. Right, so how are we going to work with, what is the methodology that we are going to follow? What is the research programming tool that you're going to follow? So all these things will be done. And then um, evidences. Um, how are we going to collect uh, the results and uh, in what form are you collecting? That also matters. And then a discussion, original conclusion based on the research work. Okay. So this is very important, uh, important methods of uh, good academic writing. So cohesion is very, very important, right? See now, when you write something, it should not be like just putting a few stones together. It should be like, uh, as I told you in the beginning, it should be like writing a small story, right? And how are we going to write this uh, story? We will introduce the, uh, the, the characters, we introduce the plot, and then we just give the association between them. And then we decide to go with the events. So in the same way, it is essentially important, right, um, to have a kind of cohesion with regard to uh, the entire process of writing a good academic, uh, academic research paper, or it can be with respect to the team with which you are working to get your um, paper ready, right? So how many of you would uh, really um, uh, love when you start writing your research article? Please respond. Uh, 
My question is, have you enjoyed? Have you enjoyed academic writing? Hello, please respond. Hello, the answer is yes or no. So at least I didn't in the beginning when I was doing uh, um, my research work, when I was a PhD scholar, I used to really postpone the process of writing. So now there are different ways uh, to make a cohesive writing, like that should be like, uh, um, just taking and then making make us taking all the pearls and then making a string of pearls one after the other meticulously you have to select and then choose I mean suppose if you are given a bowl full of pearl we will not just do it randomly or not do it unconsciously we just hand pick the each and every pearl so that everything is uniform in the similar way it is very very important to um, to just focus on this the number one is pronouns so what are the pronouns that I'm going to use in my academic writing then lexical signpost that is words and phrases used to make lists and they give examples and generalize show the result and then just um, explain the result then summarize and express and alternate right after doing everything you just give a mention that uh, there are other options of doing it and what are the advantages and disadvantage of doing that then repeating the keywords right we, we that is not a good practice to repeat the keyword so we cannot just repeat the keyword and you have to understand um, the scenario is much better, right? And then you can just manage. Then selection of anaphoric nouns. See now I write a noun which means something to me, whereas it is going to convey some other meaning to the reader. So we should not use all those things, but still um, we use them, right? Because we don't give much attention or importance to um, the art of writing, right? So then important methods of good academic writing, clarity. See, when you write something, first of all, it should be clear to us. Sometimes when the research scholars, when they write the paper for the first time, and uh, when they write the second or first or third paper, right? And um, we really do not know like how to read the paper and then get it corrected. So it's a Herculean task, right? Because they would have uh, thought something and they would have done something else and they would have written on that. Now, making us to understand, um, I mean, by reading, right, leads, I, that, that requires lots and lots of efforts. And you have to uh, be very clear about the, the writing that I'm going to present should have the component of clarity. So uh, clarity plays a very important role. Clarity depends upon two sections, namely clearness and proper composition. So the principle of clarity employs the sufficient degree of um, clearness of the research work during communication and presenting and then it is used to avoid ambiguities with respect to the research and its conclusions there should not be any ambiguity so i try to say something and if that is going to be conveyed in a different perspective it is all done there is no point in writing such research article then proper composition includes clear arrangement of the research work and its written document that's what I said, um, you have to take essential uh, steps or we have to take extra pain, you have, to you have to walk an extra mile to reach your destination. Then uh, plagiarism. So according to the Oxford Dictionary, plagiarism is a practice of taking someone else's work or ideas and passing them off as one's own. This is a very simple one, right? We should not... Um, kind of even uh, just uh, copying some work, right? And uh, that is uh, kind of offense. So we have to take it with seriousness. And then, um, in a, I mean, it is an academic and uh, literary that um, whether inter, uh, I mean, intentionally or unintentionally something happens and it occurs when using someone's language, ideas, materials without 
without knowledging its source, right? Now, suppose when I feel that this particular uh, principle is very important for my work, then I can just borrow it, but I have to give due citation and I have to give the reference of that. Uh, it becomes that I just make it transparent. I, I just give the clarity that I have referred to a particular paper and that paper has got its own advantages. So that's why because of the relevance that I have between my work and the already established work, now we have got it. So it is an academic and literary, uh, I mean, a theft, whether intentionally or unintentionally, it occurs when using someone's language, ideas, and materials without acknowledging a purpose. So I think this is quite self-explanatory. So now when you are doing high quality research, the very important thing is we should never try to reinvent the wheel, right? The wheel is already invented with that. Um, we are just proceeding further. And then make the world understand, see, I have done something new. I have done something novel. So types of plagiarism, like direct copying, um, it can be a kind of verbatim text, just cut, copy, paste, right? Indirect copying, paraphrasing, like you just make uh, some corrections here and there and do it. Then cyber and digital plagiarism, and digital plagiarism, like uh, we just go in for, um, I mean, cut, copy from the digital media. Then copying the ideas, self-plagiarism, like I cannot copy my own work, right? So that's the fate of it. So even I cannot just record whatever work that I have done, I have to do some modification so that it becomes original. Then steps to avoid plagiarism, use original uh, ideas and um, opinions. This is very important. Don't uh, kind of uh, go in for using others brain, right? Because uh, uh, we should, rely on and we should celebrate the ideas from our brain and um, not from us. Okay, use original ideas and opinion, paraphrase properly so that the uh, plagiarism can be handled, uh, it can be combated. And then while summarizing, again, we should be very careful, right? When you are summarizing and we should not try to mimic or uh, I mean, try to reproduce the work of others. Then cite the sources. If I have uh, borrowed some idea, I have to give proper citation and I have to give proper due that you are using it for validating um, your original work. Then cite the sources. Very important. We have to give references. Then use uh, quotations and marks. Like you can make it very interesting and um, unless otherwise you have the idea of. Uh, introducing novelty, then it should be robust in problem solving and many such things. See now, uh, this is very interesting, right? Um, Sir Isaac Newton, he discovered when an apple was falling from the tree. So it doesn't mean that a scientist can go sit in a, sit under the tree and say that, oh, okay, um, this Sir Isaac Newton discovered uh, the gravitational, well, that is the gravitational force by seeing an apple. So I'm going to discover by seeing the same idea, right, for orange. So when I'm going to just replace one material or one idea with the other, but still it remains the same, it, it's all done, right? It is gone, that's all. So research paradigm, now you have to dream design, then um, you have to go for uh, delivering the, um, your research experiment, or it can be a kind of collecting data from the primary source, secondary source, right? Deliver and then discover certain features. Okay, so after you discover what you do, then again, you have to come down and then we should go for the most important one that is publication, right? So creativity is the fundamental attitude of science, which is driven by curiosity. So I think all of us must be knowing about it, right? Um, see, now we should always have uh, fire in the belly, right? We should always feel that I am going to do something new. Now, interestingly, now each and every higher education institution is focusing on um, innovation, incubation, startup, and many more. So uh, in, in such a situation, what should we do? We have to make our work as novel as possible and we have to plan for filing patents and so that it becomes a kind of true contribution of yours. So creativity is fundamental at attribute of science, right? Which is uh, driven by 
curiosity and nothing, nothing else. So suppose if you sit with writing uh, a paper, right? And um, see what happens? Nothing is done, only the dustbin is overflowing. This happens to every one of us. We just write something, strike out, again write something, we strike out, and then we just go ahead with that. And um, um, what am I going to do if I feel that I'm not confident, right? Then you get opinion from your seniors, get opinion from your research supervisors, ask them to give a kind of outline. How should I start? That's why I said in the beginning, you have a kind of questions with you, right? You just uh, list the questions to be answered by your paper. And when you can just transform the questions into answers. So that is going to help you to have a kind of better clarity about how to draw or how to uh, write a, a perfect research article. So this is a conclusion about uh, academic writing, like I'll come to the final conclusion a little later. So this academic writing is a linear, which means that it, it has one central point or theme um, with every part of uh, contributing to the main line of argument without degradation or repetition. So I'll come again, academic writing is a linear process because you have to start with your idea and you have to explain why you have done and supporting document in terms of review of literature then we have to make a mention about designing um, methodology and then you have to select the tools and then you have to like do the experiment as such, then calculate uh, the accuracy of the work or calculate whatever is being given by your uh, idea and then record it, analyze with the, uh, with the contemporary research work uh, outcomes and then see, right? how better your work is. By chance, if the work is not so good, but still it has got some novel component, still you can publish an article where, um, where the people feel that, right? There is a small kind of incremental change that you have done. And so the paper may get accepted. And suppose if you feel that there is still scope for improvement, that is also possible. And hence we can just think of how I can radically change my paper structure and then make my new idea to be available for the entire public community. So most common reasons for writing include uh, to report on the piece of research the writer has conducted. So it's going to be a small research work, but still there's no other go. To answer a question, the writer has been given or chosen. Right, for some uh, research scholars, those who are very lucky enough, right? And if they go and meet the research supervisor and the research supervisor can give a problem across the table and there is no need for us to really like, um, I mean, uh, bother about what is my research domain or what is my, um, my problem line and things like that. But uh, for many people after they join for about two and two and a half years, they may not be able to sit with the problem because, because, because we do not know when you start with an idea, there is no assurance that we are going to get good results or not. We do not know whether it is going to be better than the existing ones. We are just making a sincere attempt, right? to solve the problem that you have in your hand in the best possible way. Only after getting the answers, we really validate whether the methodology that you have chosen is correct or not. Suppose if you take artificial intelligence as an illustration. Now, there are a good number of machine learning models. So starting from linear regression to support vector machine uh, to naive-based classifier. So each one has got its own limitations it, uh, and each and every method has got its own advantages too. So uh, it is all left to us. How are we going to manage the situation? So to answer a question, the writer has been uh, given or chosen, right? Then to discuss the subject of common interest and then give the writer's view. This is another one. And then to synthesize the search done by others on a given topic. So this is what we call it, just collecting the information and then going ahead. So, um, what can we do to go for a good research? Uh, yes, writing is an art I like more. Good, though there is a kind of a delay, but uh, the answer is a very interesting one. And uh, yes, for many essays, 
uh, say have you um, have you enjoyed academic writing it is uh, dr gayatri yes ma'am uh, dr stanley like yes madam uh, dr deepak yes madam and then um, dr n ulagnathan it is again yes and then every, i mean dr suresh yes well so um, as we talk about all these things right um, the way of writing research or the way in which we approach observe your world and come up with a question to answer using scientific method there should be i think uh, dr n ulagnathan has raised his hand i think you can you can unmute your mic and then just speak out dr n ulagnathan Hello, Dr. N. Ulagnathan has raised his hand. Uh, if you want to ask a question, we can do it. I think, well, so observe your world and come up with a question to answer using the scientific methods. Ulagnathan, sir, if you have any question, you can unmute yourself. You have given the privilege to unmute. There's a silence. Huh. Yes, ma'am, we shall continue. We shall continue, yes. Thank you. So, and of course, always plan for a research career, just not a research project, right? See, now uh, when I go for Viva, I normally used to tell, and once we get the degree, it doesn't mean that the journey of research has come to an end. In fact, that is a place from where your research journey starts because you are going to be independent. You are going to be on your own. You have got the freedom to do whatever that you like without any restriction. So your re real research starts on the day of getting your degree. And then it is going to be the, the platform is yours. The playground is yours. The ball is in your court. So ultimately, you can just play as you like and then be... Um, a good performer so and of course always plan for uh, the research career and just not a research project okay so um all my best wishes to you um, because uh, we aspire to be a very good researcher and it is it all depends how best uh, we can put our efforts to become a successful researcher so um, it all depends how best we do it so now we'll continue with this so Mahatma Gandhi Ji says, be the change you want to see in the world, right? See, when you feel that the quality of research is not good enough, right? You know how to write a research. It should be like writing a kind of uh, um, a story. It is like painting a drawing. It is like uh, doing something uh, special that will really interest you. So uh, when you have a kind of a dream, when you have a kind of pattern to be achieved, Right? It is very important that uh, you must be able to show yourself. It is a time to show up yourself. It is time that your research should be a showcase for your quality. It is going to be a showcase for your intelligence, right? So writing a research is, is, a, is a phenomenon that every one of us do. But have we ever decided to instill quality in the research? We do not know the answer. Maybe yes, maybe no. But even then, what, what should we focus ultimately on? Number one, it should be a novel work. Then number two, it should be as simple as possible when you are writing. Then number three, based upon the journal that you are going to communicate, you have to decide about the structure. Then number four, you are going to give some arguments which are going to help you to uh, state that your work is superior than the other work. Right? How am I going to prove my... Uh, my um, uh, merits of my research work and or the kind of edge I have over the rest. So all these things play a very important role. So be the change you want to see in the world. So let us not wait for others to, I mean, strike a sixer, right? Let us be the, um, be the opening batsman or let us be the kind of uh, person who can make changes and make others to, uh, I mean, just 
follow us. So now there is always an activity like when you decide to do something new or when you want to achieve something, right? So first of all, you have to plan, right? And then you have to design the methodology for that. After you design, then you have to go for implementing it, right? We call it as acting, right? And ap I mean, after you, I mean, let me respond to your dream, right? I mean, implementing it. And then after you implement it, you analyze what are the uh, good, good uh, aspect and bad aspect of your research. So after you analyze, when you feel that it is not a satisfactory product, then you have to go back, right? So now, um, one second. Before that, right, I have taken all the information from the uh, net, but however, I just want to make one point very clear uh, before we move into question and answer session. Now, uh, this um, research has become a very uh, different, uh, or this has become a kind of very sophisticated phenomenon. See, now when you are writing, uh, this is about writing a good um, academic research article. But now, suppose if you really want to, I mean, uh, have a different recognition for your research work, you have to go for patenting. So how many of you have patents with you? Have you filed or granted patents? Have you ever, I mean, have got the patents granted? But now I think uh, if you can pay some money, a patent is being got. I am talking about uh, getting a patent uh, like in a systematic way without any influence or without paying any uh, money, like uh, as we have pay journals. I'm not talking about those kind of patents, genuine patents. See now, uh, there is a kind of awakening. Um, getting patent is also equally important as publishing a research article. You know why? Because this academic writing is also very important. At the same time, patent is going to have an edge over publishing a paper. And that is the reason why uh, the young researchers or the, the present research scholars are being encouraged to file at least one patent for their research work. So now um, earlier, uh, you're not supposed to publish your research article when you decide to patent your process. But um, uh, thanks to all the changes that take place, now there is a statement that you can publish a paper and if you feel that the idea is novel, um, within one year of your publication, you must be able to file for patent. So this is a very welcome change. And um, by mistake, if you had published your research paper without just thinking about patenting, if you one of your friends come and say that, oh God, why did you go for uh, publishing a paper? This works patenting then we panic, but now you don't have to panic. And if you feel that it has a potential for patenting, within one year of publication, we can go for filing also. And then we have to think of uh, uh, at least, uh, I mean, getting your paper published in at least one paper in high quality research as SEI journal, or if it is arts, then you can just think of uh, Indian Citation Index, or you can just think of, uh, I mean, getting it published with uh, uh, good quality research journals. See, now we have to plan. That is the reason why I said we have to plan. So as you decide your research, what is your framework? What is the timeline? And how am I going to take my research forward? Is it going to be a completely a new one or I'm going to make some improvement on the existing one? If I'm making the improvement, how fast can I improve? See, like this, you have to sit and then you have to write down, you have to write down the questions, get answers, and those answers should become the kind of platform for us to pursue our research further. So um, be very conscious about the ideas that you create, and then uh, try to plan for implementing your ideas. And when you implement, please ensure the metrics that you use play a very, very important role, because normally what we do is we just try to copy the metrics which are being used in other papers. Why not we create our own metrics? If you just spend some amount of time, you can just come out with a new metric that is going to bring you a lot of fame and name. So um, while selecting the metrics, let us not just go and then 
I mean, uh, just putting like putting the old wine in the new bottle. Instead, we have to, uh, I mean, quickly um, kind of uh, react and then um, ensure that like whatever that you do should be novel, whatever that you do should be different from others. And that uh, just uh, be, a, I mean, uh, you should be a kind of agent who brings in difference, right? Difference is positive difference in terms of everything that you do, right? Because even when you do some household work, right? Like the cleaning or, uh, I mean, decluttering the house, right? You have to ensure that we are doing it in the best possible way. So that quality conscious, consciousness should be there all along. And if that quality consciousness is there in you, that will be the driving factor. And that will be the motivating factor with which you can do a lot of wonders. So now, um, there is a story i just want to i mean close my presentation with a story uh, there was an architect right who was uh, who was known for his uh, research i mean uh, known for his uh, design and uh, his uh, plan everything was the best in the city so uh, the owner of the company was minting money like anything and uh, because he was the best architect and he was very innovative and uh, he sought that one design is not <clears throat> is not the copy of the other or there is no similarity between the designs that he made. So he had about say 20 years of his uh, designing business and he was working in the company for about 20 and 20 plus years. At some point of time, he got really bored, right? And there was a kind of monotony that, uh, that set on his mind. So then he decided, oh, come on, I, let me not um, a kind of... Um, do this business all over again enough is enough i have done my best and i have given the best also to the world so why not i just think of quitting this uh, profession so well, he just thought over it he was brooding over it and at some point he decided okay let me just go and then tell the uh, owner of the company uh, ceo saying that i want to quit so he just goes and then he just uh, bundles his courage and then he <clears throat> walks into the room of the CEO and says that uh, I have an important information to share with you. So I just want to uh, quit my job. Um, the, the CEO was taken by shock and uh, was taken by shock. And then uh, he said, okay, it's your choice. So, but anyway, I, I have a condition or I have a request. So before you could quit the job, I, I'm going to give you one final project that should be the best of everything. So that is going to be the testimony for the work that you have done or the kind of service you have done to the company. So please ensure that you just give the best with respect to all the aspects of this construction and design. So because this man is already worn out, right? And he is not very um, kind of... Uh, interested to do the work and because of his lethargy and because of the kind of laziness and because he was feeling so monotonous about doing this work he didn't bother to make that work as interesting as novel or as decorative or good as possible he just didn't make any efforts at all right in designing constructing he just like uh, making the people to work on their own and uh, he didn't contribute much and there was no quality control, there was no quality inspection, there was no quality assurance and things were going at one point, the, the building uh, gets completed and the housewarming day was also announced. So the CEO comes and then takes the hands of uh, the architect and then traces and says he's the one who made this company a profit-making company and because of his ideas like uh, uh, I have grown so much and then uh, he says uh, he just he calls the architect very close to him and says well uh, we have done your best and uh, we have received the best from you so as a token of love I'm going to hand over this building to you this is my gift to you right so ultimately, the one with the, with the lowest quality, right, which he doesn't bother to construct, right, and uh, that comes to his hand and that becomes his property. So the, um, the takeaway point here is if we compromise at some point, right, we will be the victim and that is going to penalize us. So that's very, very important. So please ensure that when you are doing research, don't get demotivated and then don't get uh, kind of... Uh, 
uh, hesitant. Suppose if you are get stuck somewhere, and if you know that, if you do not know how to proceed, please get the assistance of the trustworthy people who are around you. Like you can just go talk to them saying that I'm not able to do it. How am I going to do it? So please get the assistance from the experienced faculty members or your um, co-supervisor or supervisor, and then try to make things straight. So once it is done right, and then it is very easy for you. And all that you need is perseverance, commitment, and a small dose of interest. Because every one of us can do novel, interesting work because God has blessed, blessed all of us with the same amount of brain. So it all depends how you make yourself productive. So in order to make yourself productive, you have to focus on your health. Without health, we cannot achieve anything. So if you are very conscious about what you eat, what when you eat, how you eat, where you eat, right? And then um, be conscious about how you sleep, how long do you sleep, how frequently do you sleep? And if you just be conscious about all those things, right? Then once your, uh, your, board, your body, your mind, your soul becomes um, a kind of vibrant or when it becomes very synergized, right? Then probably whatever that uh, you do is going to be quality assured work, right? So uh, be conscious and be thorough with the procedure and be open for criticisms, right? I just want to pass only this as the message. And quote, unquote, please open for criticisms because academic writing cannot be complete without criticisms. So it is not a kind of personal um, advice or it is not a kind of taking revenge on another person. It is like um, just... Uh, I mean, adding a new dimension of value addition into the work when you just look out for criticisms. So any review process is a value addition and any criticism that you get during the presentation forums or in the kind of any kind of thing, it is, there's a scope for uh, augmentation. So it's, that's all. So now uh, it is all in our hand, right? Woods, I think all of us must be able to recollect the poem that we have learned in the school days, in the crossroads. So woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have miles to go, promises to keep before I sleep. So this is the same with respect to uh, the kind of activities that you do, the achievements that you do. Maybe I have uh, miles to go. I have to cross many milestones. I have to keep up my promises, maybe academic or non-academic, personal or whatever it is. So we have to keep up the promises. So let us, let us be uh, professionally good, personally good. And uh, so don't carry your mistakes around with you. See, when there is going to be a kind of criticism from the reviewer, right? Please take a note about how they are analyzing the work and how they are criticizing the work. Please ensure that it doesn't happen next time. See, every mistake that you make is going to give you an opportunity to learn, right? And every mistake that you make is going to make you conscious about why it has happened. How can I like uh, uh, rectify this? And suppose if uh, the criticisms are not going to uh, be taken in the right way with a positive note, right? Then it's very hard for us to grow ourselves. See, to grow, we have to be open to the criticisms. So instead, place them under the feet and use them as uh, stepping stones to rise above them. Thanks for your patient listening and uh, thanks for your responses. Thanks for your instant participation. And thank you very much. Thank you so I much, ma'am. Organizers, I thank the management of it and I thank all the participants for this uh, wonderful opportunity. I wish you all the best. Thank you so much, ma'am. Dear participants, do you have any queries?
I deem it a great privilege and honor to propose the oath of thanks on the behalf of the Department of Computer Science, VET Institute of Arts and Science. There is a famous quote of Swami Vivekananda. Take up one idea, make that one idea your life. Think of it, dream of it, live on that idea. Let the brain, muscles, nerves, every part of your body be full of that idea. And just leave every other idea alone. This is the way to success. First and foremost, I thank our chief guest, Dr. Shanmaga Vadivu, Professor and Head, Department of Computer Science and Applications at Gandhigram Rural Institute, who, despite the in a busy schedule, has found time to grace this occasion. Please accept our sincere appreciation for the outstanding presentation you have made to our teacher fraternity. It was a very interesting session, ma'am. And I thank you so much for sharing your time and expertise with us. Thank you once again, ma'am. I thank all the participants for your valuable time today. Feedback link is posted in the chat box. Kindly give your feedback. Thank you once again. Thank you, ma'am.